Um, so as we have been looking at the rally before today, at least, uh, we have talked to a lot of folks about what some of the risks might be in 2021, even though there is a lot of hope and optimism out there. Brian Sazi, uh, what are some of those risks? I know you just wrote a piece looking at them. Yeah, funny you mentioned risks, Julie, because yes, I just uh, had a piece now hit on the homepage. I will find its homepage about that. Three risks, uh, primarily cooked up by uh, Goldman Sachs strategist David Costin, and they all make sense to me. Chief risks uh, out there for your portfolio, uh, vaccine hiccups. We have started to see this uh, out of the gate. It should be expected, uh, most notably with Pfizer, some hiccups in getting the vaccines to the places where they need to be going. Uh, so that is a risk. Certainly, I think, guys, that this market has not even thought about. It continues to trade around record highs, uh, notwithstanding today. Uh, next risk, and, and Miles, this one, uh, I'm sure you'll dig this one, rising uh, concern around inflation. And where there is inflation, maybe the Fed uh, thinks thinks about raising rates quicker than the market expects. We're not there yet. Definitely no inflation in sight. But given all the stimulus we have seen, and, and as the vaccine starts to uh, roll out there to people around the globe, maybe business spending picks up more, consumer spending picks up more, and we do start to see inflation that the Fed would have to stomp out. And last but not least, guys, here is the January 5th Senate election uh, runoff here uh, in Georgia. If, if the Democrats do, in fact, win, there goes that divided government uh, thesis that a lot of investors have been trading on since Election Day. And you have more Democratic control, maybe you have more regulations. I'm not saying these things happen, but these are the risk factors investors need to start thinking about entering 2021. Why? Because they're definitely not thinking about them right now. Well, let, let's talk about inflation then, Sazi, because I, this needs to be broken down into to separate parts, because as you mentioned, the only thing that matters is would inflation cause the Fed to change how the Fed is thinking about its policy stance going forward? I don't think anybody doubts that there is going to be price inflation for certain things. Airlines, staying at a hotel, taking a vacation, um, probably eating at a lot of the restaurants that do remain open into next summer and fall. Uh, I'd imagine that they're going to raise prices if the supply of restaurants in their area has declined because of COVID, so on and so forth. So um, the price of some things going up is, I mean, that's inflation for that item, right? But inflation across the whole economy is the total level uh, across the economy. Again, it's, a, it's an aggregate level. Uh, it needs to be higher. Um, and by the Fed's measure, on average, for a certain period of time, and the average must be 2%, which means we'll have to have a sustained and material rise above a 2% level of inflation for a notable chunk of time, at a minimum 18 months of you know, two and a half, 2.8% inflation at least, for at least 18 months, for the Fed to think about saying we need to stamp out inflation. So um, I think it, people are going to notice that the cost of some goods and services will be higher next year. Um, but you know, as you noted, Brian, the, the only thing that matters is would that inflation cause the Fed to look at it and say we are changing our view? And I think on that count, and Jay Powell essentially said as much last week, there's basically no chance that the Fed would view a temporary rise in inflation next year um, as a reason to rewrite or, or you know, reconsider its policy you know, outlook, which has projected several years of interest rates remaining at low, uh, at zero, at least, you know, on the front end uh, of the curves and being set by the Fed, Fed, Fed funds policy rate. So um, you knew that was like bait for me. I mean, I know you put that in there just to get I, me to say this, but uh, here we are. Absolutely. And, and Miles, what, you mean to tell me the Fed doesn't want to stomp out the, the potential for the $25 Chipotle burrito bowl? Of course it does. And maybe they do it next year. I don't know. Nope, not happening. I'm with Miles on this one.